Hey there! Welcome in that new Golem Crowd tutorial where we'll see how to split a simulation cache into multiple simulation caches. So I have a simple scene here where I just exported a grid of characters standing in T-pose. So I ended up with uh, my cache property containing uh, my uh, all my caching data information. And uh, let's assume that for some reason I would like to split this. So here, that was one simulation, one particle system, but uh, I may want in some situations to have half of my crowd into one cache and half of my crowd with it. another cache just to apply some different options or whatsoever. So to address this, we're gonna use the simulation baker. So when you open the simulation exporter, um, by default, it brings you to the simulation exporter tab, which is the tool you probably used here to create that cache, but it also has a second tab called the baker. And here, that baker allows you to bake your crowd in multiple file formats, such as FBX, Alembic, USD, and some render-based file format there. But you also have like a simulation cache tab, which is available to you. So we can enable that, and simulation cache means that um, you can bake out a, a cache which already exists, but bake it with different options. The options could be um, baking the layout on it. You know, sometimes you apply some layout modification onto your crowd. Here, my layout file is just empty, but you just move characters around, apply rotations, kill characters. And um, uh, whenever you do this, it stays as a procedure. A non destructive process on top of it, but sometimes you may want to apply it to your cache and you may want to your cache to reflect exactly the layout operation so it gets updated. Simulation cache will be rewritten and gets updated with all those layout modifications. But sometimes you may want to split your crowd, and this is exactly that what we'll do here. So, in order to split the crowd, we get the entity IDs field here. By default, it's um, pre-filled with a star wildcard, which means I want to export everybody. But here, what I'll do is I just want to export a part of my crowd. So I can use this button. This button, by the way, takes um, a selection and will fill the selection based on this. Um, by the way, something I've noticed uh, in my version, which is 827, and I'm probably going to change it into the next versions there, is that it tells you that, that that field is only available if you use FBX or Alembic bake export. So this is not true anymore. Uh, USD and cache will be uh, actually supported with that options there. So let's start. Um, let's uh, switch to F9, which is component mode within Maya. And F9 selection will allow me to uh, select my characters into the viewport there. So uh, let's say I want to have just the right part of my crowd. I'm gonna update that field with my current selection. Uh, I want to export from frame 1 to 150, that doesn't change. And I want to provide a cache name and a layout name which correspond to what I'm exporting. I'm gonna write this out into a big directory. So great, let's do this. Uh, it asks me if I want to save the layout before, so let's do this. And you'll notice that as soon as the bake process uh, has succeeded, we'll have into our timeline two different lines now. Uh, my green line, which was the actual line that I had before, and now we can see that a blue line is coming into the game. Uh, also, if we uh, look into the scene, we've got a cache proxy node, uh, which um, uh, points to a split TD write um, um, cache, which is exactly the name that we provided here. And uh, maybe if we want to make sure uh, that uh, it processed properly, I can go into my cache proxy, initial cache proxy, and just disable it. Now we can see that the green line has appeared, and as soon as I um, check my viewport, now I've got the right part of my crowd. So that's great. Now I've got half of my crowd into that new uh, cache proxy. So let's disable that for a minute. Oh, by the way, no, let's bring it down. Uh, let's enable it. Okay. Um, uh, side note here, um, we can see that those fields get connected to something and uh, if we do right click we can see it's connected to the bake attributes of the window. So we're going to assume that and whenever you're going to bake something out, you always want to bake it into the same cache proxy node. So e here if I um, maybe uh, provide a, a left uh, name there and whatsoever, it will update this with left as well. So it means that we'll only see the left part of the crowd. Let's say we want that cache proxy to actually um, represent just the right part of my crowd and create another one just for the left part and have both into the scene. Um, what I'll do is I'm gonna break the connection here 
between the cache name uh, and the export directory and also um, sorry and the, the uh, bake cache name there and here for the directory as well so whenever I'm gonna update this it would not update that at the same time um, but still whenever I do the bake it will be written into the cache and written into the disk so um, even if it updates this, the file still exists and the process is still okay. It's just more convenient for me to uh, see if the process went well. Um, so, okay, I broke the connection. So whenever I'm gonna change this, it will not update that and this will keep representing my right part of my craft. So let's disable that. Let's bring my initial cache on. Uh, and now I'm gonna create the left part of my craft. So I'm gonna back, go back into my selection, select just the left part, something like this. Update the list here, great. And update the names. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be split TD right and this is gonna be left. Uh, layout name is gonna be, well, once again, I won't have any, well, the layout will exist, but will be empty, but still let's provide a name which makes sense. And it's gonna written into the same directory and then right, uh, I don't really care about this. It could be a separate one or uh, it can stay in the same, whatever happens, we broke the connection with cache proxy uh, too, so this is fine. Uh, do I want to save the layout? So sure, we want. And now we can see there's a um, yellow line appearing, a yellow cache proxy in the scene. And as we did before, we can hide the, the master and we can see that this proxy now represents the left part of my crowd. This proxy there represents the right part of my crowd. So I've got my two cache proxies, uh, which uh, are fine. And if I want to, you know, make my mind around it, so this is displaying the right GBPP, so uh, that will not help. But yeah, this is cache proxy uh, right. This is cache proxy left. Great. So how do I use this to bring this into a separate scene? Let's say um, I can open the library tool from here, and whenever I'm gonna um, uh, have an empty selection and import, what it'll do is it's gonna import um, all the cache proxy existing in the scene. So split TD right, split TD left, and the master. So I can remove that master if I want to. Or another option is just I select my cache proxy that uh, I just created, the left and the right, and I bring them in and that just creates the corresponding entry. Um, you'll notice that uh, the screenshots are not representing exactly what they are. So you still have the options to, you know, um, disable one of this, take the left part here, for example, and update the screenshot. And I'll do something similar for um, the other one. Let's enable that here. So now I just have the right part here and update, and save, and um, I'll be fine. So now if I open the new scene, I can just uh, import one cache proxy or another. So the left one and the right one and manipulate them the way I want. So I hope that helps and uh, see you into the next video.